Welcome back everyone. This video will show the different streaking patterns used for the inoculation of culture specimen. The different types of streaking pattern are the T-streak, quadrant streak, continuous streak, radiant streak, and overlapping streak. And among all of these different streaking patterns, the two most commonly used streaking patterns are the T-streak and the quadrant streak. The T-streak is also known as the three-sector streak because we divide the plate into three sectors. We start by drawing an imaginary T on the Petri dish. The area above the T is where the primary streak is performed. The secondary streak is performed by touching some parts of the primary streak and spreading it throughout the second sector. The tertiary streak is also done the same way by touching some parts of the secondary streak and isolating the rest on the third sector. New loops should be used on the secondary and the tertiary streak. One disadvantage of this streak is that we can only use one sample as spreading more than two samples on the Petri dish would be difficult. The objective of this streaking pattern is to obtain isolated colonies. This picture shows a plate with isolated colonies. The subsequent dilution of the organism through the use of different loops dilutes the colonies and allows them to have isolated colonies. This Petri dish does not give isolated colonies and subculture might be needed to provide isolated colonies. Next is the quadrant streak, also known as the four quadrant streak, four sectors, four way streak, or Q streak. Like the T streak, only one specimen may be plated using this inoculating pattern. The Q-strick is performed in the same manner as the T-strick, only this time having four separate equal-sized sections of the agar. So this is the primary streak. After that, a new loop is used, touching some parts of the primary streak to make the second streak. And then a new loop is used, touching parts of the second streak, making the third, third streak, and then lastly, a new loop is used touching some parts of the third streak, isolating the rest of the sector. Like the T-streak, the quadrant streak's objective is to have isolated colonies. This plate shows isolated colonies, which may now be used for the next testing. A variation of the quadrant streak is called as the multiple interrupted streak. With this, as the name implies, the streaking pattern is interrupted or is discontinuous. This streaking pattern is usually used for high concentration inoculum like specimens coming from stool. So this is the primary streak. Again, the streak is not continuous or they are interrupted. And then the secondary streak and then the third streak, and lastly, the fourth streak. And again, the objective of this is to have isolated colonies after incubation. Next is the continuous streak, where only one loop is needed to perform the inoculation, which makes it very easy and quick to perform. To perform this, only a single continuous movement from the starting point or the top of the plate all the way down to the center of the plate is used for inoculation. We use this streaking pattern when the culture is already pure or when the inoculum or the specimen is very dilute or has a minimum number of organisms. Another advantage of the continuous streak is that the plate can be divided into two to six divisions, with each division having a different type of specimen. This is used to save media, especially when the resource is very minimum. The semi-quantitative streak is a modification of the continuous streak. This is also known as the simple streak used for urine specimen. For this type of streaking pattern with urine, a calibrated loop is used so that we can quantify the number of isolates or organisms uh, inside the specimen. 
To perform this, a control line is streaked and then the simple continuous sticking pattern is done all the way up to the bottom of the plate. A control line is ideal not only for the semi-quantitative streak or the simple streak, but to any of the types of streaking patterns. Next is the radiant streak, also known as the radial streak, because the inoculating pattern radiates outwards towards the other edge of the plate. This radiant streaking pattern is used to propagate pure culture or when the specimen is diluted. In some cases, other laboratories also use this streaking pattern for fungal isolation. To perform the radiant streak, we spread a loop full of the organisms in a small area at the edge of the agar, and then using another sterilized loop, we spread or inoculate from the primary streak seven to eight straight lines radiating to the outer edge of the plate. And then after that, we use another sterilized loop to inoculate discontinuous or interrupted streaks perpendicular to the radiating streaks. And lastly, we have the overlapping streak used for sensitivity testing. This type of streaking pattern can produce a long growth of organisms, which is needed to test for the susceptibility pattern of organisms against certain antimicrobials. Most references indicate that to, pro to produce a long growth of organisms, uh, three different streaking patterns must be performed in different directions. So if this is our plate, for example, our first streak would come from the very top of the plate going all the way down, making sure that there are no spaces in between. So I'm just doing this roughly. And then after that, the second streaking pattern is done in a different direction. So from the top all the way going to the bottom. So again, I'm just doing this very roughly. So when you perform, you should make sure that you uh, get, uh, go from one side to the other side of the Petri dish without spaces in between. And then lastly, a third streak is performed, usually diagonal from the other streaks. So as you can see, all the streaking patterns are overlapping, making sure that there would be growth in all directions of the plate. There are other laboratories that would perform a fourth streaking pattern just to make sure that there is a long growth of organisms. So again, from top to bottom, side to side, making sure that there are no spaces. And lastly, there are other laboratories that would create a fifth streaking pattern, which rims the outside part or, or the outer edge of the agar. And that ends this video about the different types of streaking pattern for the inoculation of culture specimen. Thank you very much for watching.